course. After completing this learning module, students should be able to explain the difference between primary and transformed cells, demonstrate knowledge of programmed cell death or apoptosis, describe trophic factor withdrawal induced apoptosis mechanisms, explain how the cell cycle is controlled, describe how cyclins affect the activity of cyclin dependent kinases, explain how retinoblastoma is regulated to control entry into S phase, describe the mechanism by which P53 halts the cell cycle, explain cell differentiation and how it is maintained, explain the concept of cell memory, describe the function of maintenance methylase, and explain how RNA splicing and protein processing enzymes influence cell function. Primary cells, or non-transformed cells, are cells that have been isolated directly from normal tissue. They can grow in cell culture for a limited amount of time, but this requires supplementation with various growth factors. Primary cells will also exhibit what is known as contact inhibition. They will stop growing once they have covered all of the surface of the tissue culture dish. Transformed cells, on the other hand, are cells that were isolated from cancerous tissue or from primary cells that have been manipulated genetically to lack cell cycle regulatory functions. Transformed cells do not require extensive growth factor supplementation and they can grow and divide indefinitely. They also lack contact inhibition, that is, they will not stop growing when they are packed in tightly next to one another. As you can see in this picture, they will grow on top of one another again and again and again. There are two major classes of cell death, apoptosis or programmed cell death and necrosis. In general, one can think of necrosis as accidental cell death or traumatic cell death. Necrotic cells swell and become leaky spilling out cellular and nuclear debris onto nearby cells and eliciting an inflammatory response. Apoptosis, or programmed cell death, on the other hand, can be thought of more along the lines of a well-planned suicide. Apoptosis is an energy-dependent process during which a series of well-controlled cellular proteases and endonucleases dismantle the cell into small packages called apoptotic bodies, which are then phagocytized in an orderly fashion without producing an inflammation. Apoptosis is the mechanism by which multicellular organisms remove unwanted cells, old cells, or damaged cells. A trophic factor is any growth factor or hormone whose signaling is necessary to promote cell survival. In the absence of trophic factors, the cells will undergo apoptosis. When trophic factors are removed from primary cells, a pro-apoptotic protein called BAD translocates from the cytosol to the mitochondrial membrane, where it inhibits the activity of two anti-apoptotic proteins called BCL2 and BCLXL. BAD prevents BCL2 and BCXL2 from inhibiting the formation of Bax ion channels in the mitochondrial membrane. Formation of Bax ion channels then disrupts the integrity of the outer mitochondrial membrane allowing cytochrome C out of the mitochondria into the cytoplasm where it binds to APAF1. APAF1 is the apoptosis promoting and activating factor 1. Cytochrome C binding to APAF1 activates its function which converts procaspase 9 into active caspase 9. 
Caspase 9 can then subsequently activate other procaspases, such as procaspase 3, which then activate other downstream proteases and endonucleases, which dismantle the cell, resulting in cell death. In many cell types, signaling by trophic factors promotes cell survival by inhibiting default apoptotic mechanisms. Trophic factor signaling results in activation of PI3 kinase and its downstream kinase AKT or PKB, which will phosphorylate the proapoptotic protein BAD. Phosphorylated BAD is sequestered in the cytosol bound to a protein called 1433. This activity keeps BAD from functioning as an inhibitor of BCL2 and BCLXL. BCL2, BCXL function to inhibit formation of BAX channels in the mitochondrial membrane. This maintains the integrity of the outer mitochondrial membrane and mitochondrial proteins such as cytochrome C are kept out of the cytosol. APAF1 is not activated and procaspase 9 is not cleaved to its active form and the caspase cascade is not initiated. In eukaryotes is called the cell cycle. This cycle is divided into phases based on what is happening in the cell at a given time. A cell grows during the G1 phase. During this phase, there is a chemical checkpoint that controls whether the cell will divide, delay division, or enter a resting stage. When conditions in the cell are right, the G1 checkpoint will be passed and the cell will enter the synthesis, S phase. During the S phase, DNA replication occurs so that future cells will each have a complete set of the genetic instructions in the DNA. After DNA replication is complete, cells enter the G2 phase, where they continue to grow and prepare for cell division. At a checkpoint in this phase, the success of DNA replication is assessed. If all is well, the cell enters the mitosis, M phase. During the M phase, a complex series of events moves the DNA so that a complete set of genetic instructions will be sent to each daughter cell. The process of mitosis is assessed at a checkpoint during the M phase. Once this checkpoint is passed, the cell will complete mitosis as well as begin the cytokinesis C phase. Part or all of the C phase actually overlaps with the later parts of mitosis, so it is not a distinctly separate phase. During the C phase, the cytoplasm of the cell is divided and two daughter cells are created from the original cell. When this process is finished, the daughter cells enter the G1 phase and the cycle is complete. Many cells become arrested in a non-dividing state called quiescence after mitosis and just prior to DNA synthesis. These cells are said to be in the resting or G0 state. Some quiescent cells can be stimulated to re-enter the cell cycle by hormones or growth factors. However, these cells will not re-enter the cell cycle unless there is an adequate supply of macromolecules and energy to complete the process of cell division. There is a major checkpoint called the restriction point in late G1 where a cell measures its ability to complete replication. If conditions are not correct, the cell does not pass into S phase. Passage through the checkpoint is controlled by two classes of proteins known as cyclins and cyclin-dependent protein kinases. One cyclin and one cyclin-dependent kinase form a heterodimeric complex that has kinase activity. Only when complex with a cyclin is the cyclin-dependent kinase active. The activity of cyclin-dependent kinases is controlled by modulating the cellular level of the cyclin proteins. Only certain cyclins can form a complex with specific types of cyclin-dependent kinase proteins. When the level of those cyclins rise in the cell, specific cyclin-dependent kinase activities are activated. When cyclins are degraded, the kinase activity diminishes. There are two classes of cyclins. 
the G1 cyclins that bind to CDKs during the G1 to S transition are cyclins D and E, and the mitotic cyclins, cyclins A and B, which bind to CDKs during the G2 to M transitions. The activity of cyclin-cyclin-dependent complexes can be further inhibited by the activity of cyclin-dependent kinase inhibitor proteins, or CKIs. Passage through the G1 restriction point requires activation of a transcription factor called E2F. In non-dividing cells, E2F transcription factors are bound to an inhibitory protein called retinoblastoma, or RB, which prevents them from entering the nucleus and activating transcriptions of genes necessary for the S phase of the cell cycle. Growth factor stimulation of a receptor tyrosine kinase will activate the MAP kinase pathway, resulting in induced transcription of the cyclin D gene. Accumulation of cyclin D will then allow cyclin D CDK complexes to phosphorylate the retinoblastoma protein. Hyperphosphorylated retinoblastoma protein cannot bind to E2F transcription factors. The transcription factors then translocate into the nucleus and activate the transcription of genes necessary to complete the S phase of the cell cycle. Because retinoblastoma normally functions to inhibit progression through the cell cycle, it is a tumor suppressor gene. If conditions are not correct or damaged DNA is detected in the cell, cyclin-dependent kinase inhibitors are activated to block the activity of the cyclin-cyclin-dependent kinase complexes. DNA damage can arrest cells in either G1 or G2. This allows repair mechanisms time to function and correct the damage. P53 is a transcription factor that becomes activated when DNA damage is detected in the cell. Normally, P53 levels in the cell are very, very low because it is degraded as it's being made. However, detection of DNA damage by sensors of DNA damage like the ATM and ATR kinases, can activate the damaged DNA response leading to phosphorylation of P53. Phosphorylation of P53 stabilizes it and it begins to accumulate and activate transcription of genes necessary to halt the cell cycle and repair the damage. One of the primary gene targets of P53 is a cyclin-dependent kinase inhibitor known as p 21 sip P21 will complex with cyclin-cyclin-dependent kinase and prevent their activity. When the DNA damage has been repaired, the sensor kinases stop signaling to stabilize P53. P53 levels fall, and as a result, P21 level transcription declines, and the cyclin-dependent kinase inhibitor no longer inhibits the cyclin-dependent kinases, and the cell cycle resumes. Cell differentiation relies on specific stimulus by a variety of growth factors and cytokines. The classic example is the differentiation of bone marrow stem cells during hematopoiesis. Specific colony stimulating factors, or CSFs, are necessary for differentiation of bone marrow stem cells into specialized subpopulations, as well as for maintenance of their viability. Committed progenitor cells of either myeloid or lymphoid stem cell pathways are stimulated then to proliferate by specific growth factors, but progressively lose their capacity for division and develop into terminally differentiated blood cells. The differentiation state of cell lineages are maintained by several mechanisms, often referred to as cell memory. This involves cytoplasmic changes in the array of proteins expressed, particularly the transcription factors, nuclear changes such as epigenetic modifications that control the accessibility of DNA will define the sets of genes to be expressed in that cell type, as well as combinatorial gene control mechanisms 
which guide differentiation patterns and self-perpetuating phenotypes. To illustrate the concept of combinatorial gene control, here's a hypothetical situation in which a decision to make one of a pair of different gene regulatory proteins is made after each cell division. Sensing its relative position in the embryo, the daughter cell toward the left side is always induced to synthesize the even-numbered protein of each pair, while the daughter cell on the right side of the embryo is induced to synthesize the odd-numbered protein. The production of each gene is assumed to be self-perpetuating, thereby contributing to cell memory. In this hypothetical example, eight cell types can be created with five different gene regulatory proteins. If this schematic was carried out, more than 10,000 different cell types could be specified by only 25 different gene regulatory proteins. Oftentimes, regulatory proteins will regulate their own transcription, and once turned on in a cell, the expression of the regulatory protein will be continued in all subsequent daughter cells. Therefore, they remember that a progenitor cell received a signal to begin expressing this protein, and now all subsequent generations will also express this regulatory protein. Differentiation states are also maintained by inheritance of epigenetic modifications of chromatin. For example, during development of female embryos, one of the X chromosomes in each cell is randomly inactivated by condensation. This is called a bar body. The inactivated state of an X chromosome is inherited, giving rise to clonal populations of cells that have had either their paternal X chromosome or the maternal chromosome inactivated. This is the reason for the phenomenon known as manifesting heterozygosity in X-linked recessive disorders in women. And, since coat color in felines is an X-linked trait, it explains why all calico cats are female. Patterns of DNA methylation can be inherited when cells divide. Methylation of cytosine is a means to distinguish genes in the cell that are active from those that are not active. Shortly after DNA replication, an enzyme called maintenance methylates methylates CG sequences base paired to CG sequences that are already methylated on the parental strand. This ensures that methylation patterns are inherited by the daughter cells and that the same genes will be active and inactive. Transcription factors binding to regulatory regions of actively transcribed genes prevents those regions from being hypermethylated. However, if most of these sequence-specific DNA binding proteins are downregulated and dissociate from the promoter region, as happens when genes are turned off, the promoter can become hypermethylated, which enables other proteins to bind and shut down the gene completely. Proper methylation of promoter regions are important for development. Acetaldehyde, for example, produced from oxidation of ethanol, can cross the placental barrier and impair fetal DNA methylation patterns, which is thought to contribute to fetal alcohol syndrome. Post-transcriptional processing of messenger RNA can also be tissue-specific. For example, the primary transcript of the SARC tyrosine kinase is differentially spliced in nerve cells compared to most other cells, resulting in a slightly longer SARC tyrosine kinase in nerves than in other cell types. Likewise, post-translational processing of proteins can also be cell-specific. For example, cells in the pituitary all express the POM C gene and produce a single peptide which is differentially processed by proteases in a cell specific manner within the pituitary to produce a variety of different peptide mediators. Thus, under different stimulation, 
the anterior and posterior pituitary can produce completely different end products from the same gene and primary translation product. Here is a short quiz to test how well you've mastered control of cell growth and differentiation.